Uh, thank you. Hello. Uh, first of all, I did, you know, you're not quoting me. Eh? I never say that I'm, <laughs> I know more than anyone. Eh? So um, my name is Jordi Valsales, and I'm going to talk about integrated antenna design, mainly for Internet of Things. So um, I'm coming from the company IMST in Germany. We are located um, in near Dusseldorf. And we are a research company mainly focused on uh, wireless technologies. So we have around 150 people in our uh, company, and we have different departments, and some people do some circuit design. Then we also pro provide some testing services. I don't know if you're aware, we do uh, LoRaWAN certification, for example. We have also some uh, wireless design guys who can design you the whole budget link and so on. We have some products. Um, you also probably know our uh, LoRa, LoRa module. And finally, we have an antenna design department. And this is where I'm working. So normally, when, when I tell the people, uh, like relatives and friends, that I, I, I'm an antenna designer, they think I'm always on, rough, on the rooftop mounting this kind of antenna. No? So I thought, uh, let's try to give another approach. And I went to my three and a half year old uh, daughter, and I asked her, how would you explain what dad is doing? And she came with this drawing. So um, I leave it to free <laughs> interpretation, and I'll try to explain, it, explain you what I'm doing exactly. So um, an antenna designer mainly designs antenna. But what's an antenna? An antenna, it's this component on a, a communication system which is capable of transmitting and receiving electromagnetic waves. In my case, I normally design antennas up to 6 gigahertz. And this gives us a broad uh, multi options on different communication systems that work at, on these frequencies. So you may be, you may be already uh, uh, familiar with uh, mobile communications like GSM, UMTS, the 5G nowadays is coming on. Uh, we also have some satellite communications, GPS, for example, uh, Galileo, in, um, Imarsat, short range communications, NFC, RFID, Bluetooth, wireless LAN at 2.4 giga, 5 gigahertz, and of course, the long range communications with the uh, LoRa. And all these communication systems, you can put them in a bunch amount of applications. It doesn't matter because nowadays we are moving everything to wireless. Everything is wireless. So um, we can have uh, um, systems on the automotive field or in, in uh, medical devices and uh, like wearables. We have also the Internet of Things, which tends to be wireless. So uh, the first thing I do when a customer comes to me and asks me to make a design of an antenna, I recommend them that the antenna should be not left for the last thing to be designed. So we should design the antenna in parallel with the device itself. And we will see that later in the presentation, because the device plays a big role on the performance of the antenna. And at the end, it plays a big role on the communication that you aim to have. So I like to define three phases on the, on, the, on the process of designing an antenna. The first phase would be where we set our goals. We, need, we have some requirements because of the system. We have some specifications we may decide. And we even made to think of different type of antennas that consider them which one is the best one for our application and for all our device. And it's the, each application has completely different surroundings, different user uh, interface. So once we define these goals, we move to a second phase, which is we model uh, in a 3D tool the, 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 the complete device, including the antenna. And by electromagnetic simulations, we optimize this antenna to, opti to have the best performance of our communication. So when we are happy with the simulations, we move to the third phase, which is uh, the antenna fabrication and prototyping. So we fabricate it, and then we do uh, the RF characterization. So we, we look on the radiation pattern, the reflection coefficient. And finally, we may do some final tuning to have uh, the proper def design antenna. Sometimes some changes are applied, and we need to go back to phase number two, and we do some loop and so, some re-engineering to see 
to, uh, until we have what is needed for such a device. So the requirements and specifications phase is mainly basically focusing on what has to be said. Now, what's the operation frequency? Are you going to work at 2.4 giga at 868 megahertz? So which bandwidth do you need? That's also important. If you have a broadband antenna, you will need certain uh, characteristics. If you have a very narrow, narrow bandwidth, you may have another characteristics. What's the, retro, the reflection coefficient that you want for your antenna? Uh, a standard is minus 10 dB. There are some mobile applications that even work with minus 6 dB, which is your energy problem. Do you want to be energy efficient? Do you want to have a total efficiency of your antenna higher? Or you, it doesn't matter because your device is already plugged to the electricity and you just can have a very bad antenna which will radiate anyway. So this kind of, of, uh, of parameters have to be set before we start designing. And one of the things is to decide which type of antenna do we use. I divided the, the type of antennas in two types. External antennas, they are these antennas, which are mainly connected to our device by a coaxial cable, and they are placed away from our main PCBs. And so that means that the PCB itself doesn't have much influence on the antenna. Of course, you can have some off-the-shelf antennas, but you can also uh, design some dedicated antennas, which are mainly uh, in those situations which are very critical. For example, this CBS antenna, this is mounted on a metal frame, and the only way to have radiation through the metal frame was with a slot antenna. But because we didn't want to have radiation inside the device, we created this um, cavity bag slot antenna. Yeah? So uh, these kind of things, we, we need to think on the first phase, or if we choose to have an integrated antenna. What it means, an integrated antenna, the word by itself is explain, explaining, it's to integrate the antenna in, the, in your own PCB. Normally, you can go on the internet and buy off the shelf some PCBs or some ch cheap antennas, but you can also try to optimize the design of your antenna, integrating it in, at your own PCB, like we can see here. Eh? You have a PCB with two antennas, one GPS and one 868 megahertz antenna, which is integrated on your PCB. So when you manufacture in large quantities this device, the cost of your antenna is zero. So it's a cost-effective thing. So. Um, once we have defined, defined the, the goals, we go to the second phase. And for that, I decide I will show you some examples. It's a bit more easy, right? So I choose this LoRa module from IMST, the IM880. And we want to have an antenna which our customers could use as an interface between the module and their PCB. So I design this, uh, this, uh, this is my 3D model from my simulation tool with the antenna. The blue box represents the, um, the LoRa module. And then we have a main PCB, which we took as a reference, this uh, credit card size. So we simulated, and um, well, this animation goes a bit faster than I expected. But we can see in the, in the, when we see the near field distribution, we can see how our antenna is the hotspot, so we really have an element which is radiating at this frequency. Another parameter that we normally look are the reflection coefficient. In this case, we have a very good reflection coefficient, and the radiation pattern moves to uh, uh, has some, a pattern similar to a dipole, which is an omnidirectional um, radiation pattern, and it's what we were expecting. So we're in the good path. So. We decide to manufacture the antenna, and this is the PCB we created. You can see here the layout where we place our module. And let me mention, we have some uh, matching network because we already know that we are going to have to, read to, to make some fine tuning by, uh, element, uh, by uh, some lampet elements in order to do this final tuning. I will show you later, we did uh, the optimization of the antenna, and we mounted, we mounted on, on, with one model into this uh, board on our demo board in order to see if it was working. And I can say that um, we had a very nice communication between this model and our gateway in, in, inside our house. But that's not very scientific. We need to characterize exactly what's happening with our antenna. So let's go into the process that we made to optimize the antenna. So the first thing I did is I, I took 
the antenna, uh, or I took the whole PCBs with the antenna included. I removed the, the LoRa module here, and I connected with a semi-rigid cable to a coaxial cable to our network analyzer. To, to be able to measure the uh, impedance of the antenna, the input impedance. And the first surprising, well, it's not surprising, we already expected that, is that the resonance was a bit shifted than what we had simulated. The main reason is because we have changed the PCB's dimension from what we had on the simulation. So it's something that we have to have in mind every time we use an antenna and we change the, the, the main PCB's or the surroundings, there will be an effect on that. So the idea is to use the matching network to bring the, the, um, the 868 uh, impedance into, in the Smith chart into the center. And that's what I did with a couple of components, one, uh, para, uh, one serial uh, inductor, one parallel capacitor, and we can see that right now we have a very good, a very well-matched antenna. So I, we took this antenna to the anechoic chamber at IMST. We have two anechoic chambers that we are capable of measuring radiation pattern and um, efficiency and gain. And we can see when we look on the radiation pattern, we see that in one plane we have a, a very nice uniform uh, um, pattern, while in the other plane, as expected, we have something similar like a donut. It's the same as we saw on the simulation. So the, the antenna is performing very well. And when we look on the efficiency, we have uh, more than 61% efficiency and a gain, a, a quite flat gain of uh, 1.2 dBi. So the antenna, at this point, we can say it's finished. But then somebody will come and say, OK, Jordi, can you just send me this antenna and, and, and we can use it in all device? And I'll say, I'm sorry, because there are some things that have to be considered every time you make a new design of an antenna. So I have a list of different uh, tests that I wanted to show you what have to be considered. Eh? The first thing I, I did, I removed the demo board, and I let only the small board on, on, on my device. And surprise again, our antenna is being uh, detuned to a higher frequency again. So my antenna is not useful anymore for uh, this PCB. Well, there's a solution. We just need to uh, retune it by matching network, or maybe if my antenna had a larger bandwidth, I could already have been uh, in the good, with a good impedance. Another example would be to place the, the whole device on top of a metal plate. How many of your devices are not placed in, a, in, a, in, in walls or in, in columns that are metal, and, and you don't consider it when, when you are making your design? So we can see here clearly that the antenna, when placed with the metal plate, is completely detuned, and the matching is gone. So uh, the antenna is reflecting all the energy, so you are losing energy that you may need because you are using a battery uh, device. So again, there are techniques to, so we can, by um, the matching network, retune it again, or if we are considering an application or a device which may be used in different uh, surroundings, we may even think of a much more smarter situation with a reconfigurable antenna with different configurations and being able to adapt the antenna to the media himself. Yeah? Um, okay, um, for another test I wanted to show you is I placed a metal, a plastic housing on top of my antenna. It seems that it should not have any effect because it's a plastic transparent uh, lead and it's really thin. But you can see how this small uh, plastic lead has an effect on shifting the, the antenna to a lower frequency. So why we didn't have into account this, uh, uh, the housing when we did the design? That's sometimes uh, something I have to tell to my customers. You brought me the device without the housing, or you are now bringing a new housing, and your antenna is detuned. Then we need to tune it again. But it's not about considering just a plastic on top of it. What happens if we use another material? In this case, it's ABS, which is probably very used by any of you and your devices. And we can see that the, the um, frequency shift is much higher, because probably the thickness is, is so it's thicker, the epsilon r from the material is higher, so it has a much stronger effect. So that's why I say I, I recommend we move together the antenna designer with the, um, the device designer in order that at the end 
we don't have such a surprises. So um, in summary, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I had to tell you, there's not a universal antenna that works for all the devices. Uh, that, that's good for us, for the antenna designers, because for each, or, each one of your devices, you would need our support somehow. Um, but we have already seen that when we have integrated antennas, the performance is very sensitive to the, the electronics around, uh, the surroundings, and the housing. When I recommend to use a, a, a design antenna, it's also because we will increase the communication range because we will have a less reflection coefficient. So the energy that we are applying, it's being used for what is meant to be used, which is the communication. And also, we, we will improve our energy efficiency for the same reason. You're not wasting energy being reflected by the antenna. So, so you can control the, the amount of energy you are applying to your, to your uh, antenna because you know the range you want to have. So, and finally, as I mentioned before, the fact of having an integrated antenna, at the beginning may sound uh, that you have a, an extra cost, a really high extra cost because you're hiding uh, a designer, but at, in, 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 with time, and once you start manufacturing in larger scale, the cost uh, effective of having an internal antenna designed in your PCB will be much higher than having just an external antenna or an antenna off the shelf. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I, I, would like, I would like to just invite you to come to our booth. We have a booth. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. And you can also see our LoRa modules and so on. Jordi Belsais.